Okay, for our kids. Um, we're a rescue shelter and sanctuary for cats and dogs. Sometimes we get rabbits and we're in the metro Atlanta area. We service a wide area in terms of adoptions, rescue, uh, medical and such. Um, we're getting ready to celebrate our 20 year anniversary. Actually, our anniversary party is next month. Last year, we placed over 3000 cats and dogs into foster homes. 90% of those were cats. Uh, our origin was cats. We just got into dog rescue probably about eight years ago. And for our 300 foster homes, about 70% of those are active at any given time. For the focus of this presentation, we're gonna focus on the cat population that we have. Um, what do we focus on in terms of cat foster homes? Families, uh, we're in the South, so overpopulation is a real issue here. Pregnant moms, moms and kittens, orphan kittens. I just got four bottle kittens that I turned over to a foster this morning. Uh, kitten season ended early last year, but it started early this year. So they are definitely coming in early with the pregnancies and so on. Seniors, special needs, diabetic, those cats on special food, and then end of life hospice. Medical cases, that could be anything from cats that are on medicine for an upper respiratory or long-term cats that are on some sort of thyroid treatment or cancer, or anything else like that. And also cats who need a break from the shelter. We have our cats in adoption centers and PestMart and Petco's, and we don't like them to be in a cage for too long. So we'll rotate them in and out of a foster home just so they can get a cage break and stretch their legs. <coughs> Excuse me. Nothing special about how we, how we find our foster homes. Uh, we look to our existing fosters, our adopters, our volunteers, and referrals from all those people, as well as some of our partners like our veterinarians and other resources. We do have eight Petco and PetSmart adoption centers. We have four thrift stores, which is a mainstream revenue for us, as well as an, an outlet for finding foster homes for us and adopters too. We have a headquarters, which is a little bit north of where we are, where I am, and we have a satellite adoption center that is company owned. So we get questions all the time, people stopping in asking about adoptions and foster homes. We do regular features on social media, on our website, other marketing avenues like events, trade shows. Uh, we have one volunteer, for example, is in a, a car club and she does about once a month, they do a fundraiser where they, everybody brings in their old cars and they do a fundraiser for local uh, nonprofits. So that brings us foster homes as well as revenue and adoptions. How do we find uh, fosters in terms of getting them to apply to adopt? We do have a pretty intensive foster home application because we want to make sure we get all the information that we can up front and that people have an understanding of what it means to foster. You know, we have had people inquire to foster and they think it's just coming in and playing with cats. So we have a very specific application that says, you know, do you have a separate room where the cats can be separate from other pets and that type of thing? Are you home during the day where you can entertain or at night and give the cats some socialization? And then we follow up with them to ensure that they can make the commitment and that we can meet their needs, they can meet our expectations, and then foster can have a good experience. We don't want them to take a cat home that might be too much of a challenge for them and, and vice versa. Then we add them to our foster home database and we use Shelter Love as our um, system to record information. The reason we use two different systems is Shelter Love does not have a way to manage uh, foster home inspections for the Department of Agriculture. And in the state of Georgia, we have to do inspections twice a year. So we have to manage that on a simple Google Doc and Shelter Love is where we manage our medical information, movements, and of course the adoptions. Uh, foster homes. When we need a foster home, 
what I do is we do have a database and we send out group emails that are blind copied. If it's a general ask, for example, if we just did a major pull from an animal control of 30 or 40 cats, I'll get all the details, age, any special specifications, whether it be medical issues, nursing moms, uh, bottle kittens, or if it's a general ask, I'll send it to the entire database. If it's a specific ask, for example, kittens, medical, um, diabetic, then I'll send it to a specific number of people. And then in some cases, if I know it's very targeted, I'll start calling people to see if they're available to handle that special issue. How do we support the foster homes? We have ongoing training classes for bottle feeding. I'm doing one this Saturday, uh, medical care classes, mainly to get them all together to answer any questions. And what those are for is not only hands-on learning, but also what to watch for. Uh, what is a bad eye? What is a cold? What's an upper respiratory? What is ringworm? What to look for? What is over grooming versus ringworm? And we also have a foster home manual that they can use as a reference. We also have a Fur Kids Foster Home Facebook page. And this is a private page, invitation only, where foster homes can post pictures and talk with, with each other, share ideas and give support. What is our foster home team uh, was one of the questions I was asked to provide. I'm the foster home manager and I manage the assignment of who gets what fosters. We have a large group of volunteers and staff that handle the applications, the Department of Agriculture inspections, the physical placement of the cats. And then we, within three days of placing cats into a foster, we reach out to them to, them to see how everything is going. And then medical care, we have staff as well as some volunteers that provide ongoing support and medical care. And I'll go into that just a little bit later. What do we provide? Um, a foster, gets pretty much what they need. Uh, the basics are dry and wet food, dewormers, any medicine that's applicable in terms of upper respiratory, if they need something for diarrhea, you know, pretty much across the board, whatever has been diagnosed will provide. Uh, we even have fosters that will dip cats for ringworm, treat with uh, antibiotics and that type of thing. We also provide, if they need it, litter, litter box scoop, uh, bedding, beds, play yards, and toys. For medical care, uh, all cats receive intake bedding, combos, vaccines, microchips, and then follow-up bedding for wellness and for illness. We have two ways of communication from our fosters to our medical team. The first is a dedicated email that if they have a question or an issue that's not an emergency, they can email and ask the question and we get back to them within two hours. And the other one is a 24 hour emergency phone that we will answer within 15 minutes, if not immediately. And we will either get them to bring the pet in or we will have them go to emergency depending on the issue. How do we market our cats for adoption that are in foster? Uh, our fosters are welcome to bring the cats into our adoption days once they reach a certain age. Um, we do have a presence, as I mentioned, at the eight PetSmart and Petco stores. Uh, we have a, an entire team who take photographs, write biographies that are provided, the points are provided by the fosters and volunteers and loaded into our system. We do features on Facebook, Instagram, and other social media. We participate with Pet Finder, Adopt a Pet, our website and newsletters. And our kittens, we make available for pre adoption at six weeks. So when they're altered at eight weeks, we can send them home to their new families. And we also do an out of state transport program. So a lot of our fosters will take cats in from either the very beginning or for a week or two, 
get them comfortable, relaxed, and then we'll do an out-of-state program up north. What do we provide post-adoption? Uh, we have a partnership with VCA Animal Hospitals where we provide two weeks care for common issues. We have a microchip program that's a no charge microchip and no charge for renewal. Uh, we provide discounts for future adoptions. Uh, we take our adopted animals back at any time for any reason. We uh, have taken a cat back after a day and we've taken a cat back after 20 years. So uh, we wanna be a resource for the pet and for the adopter for the rest of their lives. So if there's a medical issue that comes up and the adopter is not comfortable or doesn't know what to do, we'll do whatever we can do to keep that pet in the home. And as I was working on this, I was really thinking, well, what is it that we do that's really different? Because these are all pretty, pretty standard things that we do. And I kind of came up with a few of these things is the key to a successful foster home program is open communication, you know, listening and learning. Because a lot of these fosters come to us knowing a lot more than a lot of us do. So the open communication, listening and learning, be responsive. Uh, a lot of times people can be very nervous and need reassurance that what they're doing is the right thing. And it was good for them to reach out and it was okay that there wasn't anything wrong and that they didn't really bother us. Um, assurance that we'll honor their requests, concerns, uh, timeframes and what they're comfortable doing and always be a shoulder to cry on and celebrate milestones and adoptions with them. And I know from our experience, a lot of people have said how much they appreciate just being able to talk through what's going on with somebody and that we don't minimize their concerns or say, well, you know, it's no big deal. Don't worry about it. Uh, we'll take care of it. So that's what I think is key to our program is that we really listen and are responsive to them and what their needs are. And that's the end. Wow, I think you are vastly underestimating how amazing your program is. Um, 3,000 pets a year for a non-municipal shelter is the biggest, uh, the highest volume foster program for a rescue I've ever heard of. Um, so excellent. Thank you. Um, guys, is it me or um, does their foster engagement seem to be like off the charts high? Like 300 fosters and 3,000 pets, is that, uh, and 70% of them have pets at any given time. Is that normal or is that like really high? That's high for what I've seen at the program here, mm -hmm. um, but I've also only been here for less than five months. So <laughs> but mm -hmm. just need the time for me. Yeah. Anyone else? I don't know. Allie's having trouble. Oh. He's connecting. Oh, okay. Uh, well, anyway, that, that is, um, soup that seems to me be very high. And I think that it really speaks to the support that you give fosters, um, and, and them wanting to, to continue. Um, do you all have questions? I, I, I don't have a question, but I think it's, uh, just from the, um, the presentation, I think they're pretty well organized. I think maybe that's, I think maybe that's the key, right? I mean, it seemed to to flow really well. Like everything has its place, kind of like you know exactly what, and and I think that's reflected in the presentation because otherwise it it's the presentation flows really well too. Mm -hmm. So maybe well, thank you. that's yeah. So maybe that's the key. Is you just have this system kind of totally dial in or something like that right yeah it's yeah. been very challenging because right before covid started a month before we moved our headquarters from just outside of atlanta slightly north and then covid shut down everything so we opened a satellite medical center and adoption center 
not too far from our original place. So it's been an adjustment for people having to go a little bit further to get care. And that's why we do more medical here at this adoption center. But it's been challenging, a uh, whole new group of foster homes available in our new location, wow. but also the logistics of explaining to people, you know, how we can help them, what we can do, uh, what's involved. You know, I sent out a request one time for bottle feeding and fully explained what that meant. And several people thought it meant they would come in whenever they had a few minutes and sit at a table and feed kittens. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the logistics of it really explaining what is fostering has been very interesting where we had a lot of long time fosters. When we moved a lot of those because Atlanta is a nightmare for traffic. Uh, a lot of our fosters uh, had to leave because of the sheer distance. So that's been challenging. Mm -hmm. I imagine, yeah. I, I have a, a question. Oh, God. Yeah. Oh, Is you know you what, Terry, um, if you'll stop screen sharing, I just realized I'm, I was trying to press the mute button, but it was yours because <laughs> there's a screen share. Thanks. Go ahead, okay. Julie. Yeah. Terry, I have a question. Um, how big is the, the satellite and how quickly do you like transfer whatever from, were you with the capacity the same as the old, um, whatever the old building that you have? Or? Our old building was about uh, 10,000 square feet. And that was our shelter, our medical. And we did it, we pretty much did everything out of there. Our new building is in process. We built, we bought 10 acres mm -hmm. and we are building several buildings, a medical mm -hmm. building, a cat shelter, a dog shelter, an adoption center and several other things. So we are a little bit fragmented. Where I am, our satellite adoption center is probably, you know, I don't even know how much, how big it is, but I would probably say maybe 3000 square feet here and through here we we manage our foster homes from both locations so fosters can pick up animals at either location pick up supplies food receive medical care and treatment at either location on specific days mm -hmm. so we transport cats back and forth all the time we also move cats to our adoption centers pet smart and pet coast from this location so if a foster lives east of Atlanta, this is much closer than our headquarters. So they'll bring them here and then we'll take them to a Petco or a Pets bar. Yeah, so, so it sounds like you have a lot of location allowing for people to have access, physical <laughs> access to the cats kind of thing. Yeah, we're a little limited now in terms of space because we downsized a little bit in, when we moved at our headquarters because we're building new buildings. Uh, but as soon as those are built, we will have more space to have more adoption space, more medical space and everything else up at our headquarters. We're actually having Jackson Galaxy come to our 20th anniversary party next month and he's gonna be designing our new cat shelter. Oh my gosh, that's awesome. Wow, very exciting. Um, um, oh, go ahead. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> Kelly. Um, um, so I'm, I'm also interested because you do so amazing with cat and that uh, you said that you, you add the dog part in only eight years ago, right? How's that right. going? Is that just you doing just as well with the dogs as with the cat? Dogs are a different animal, literally and figuratively. Um, we have, our dog shelter is in a different location. We actually absorbed a, another rescue that has dogs. So our goal is to bring the dogs over to our new property. We'll be building a separate dog shelter on the property, but we now have to go there. We do the medical, we have a separate team that does adoptions. Once we get them over to our property, we'll be able to integrate a lot more successfully. But 
We do bring dogs in from the islands, you know, from some of the several of the hurricanes that have happened there. And we probably, the smaller foster program for the dogs, primarily puppies or medical issues with the dogs, um, it's probably about 10% of our volume is dogs. And, and how many foster do you have for the dogs? Because you have like 300 for the cats. Well, the three, probably less than um, maybe 5% of the 300. Okay. It's about 60? No, uh, less than 5%. No, it's... Uh... Yeah. 15, about 15. Yeah, sounds right. Yeah. I don't manage the dog foster program. I just know some of the numbers, but I don't manage the dog foster. Okay, thank you. Yeah. How many, it sounds like you have a lot of volunteers and staff who hold a, who have a hand in managing the program. How many would you say in all are helping? And, and I've seen this with a lot of high volume foster programs where there are, you know, there's usually not just one person who's got like the whole bag in their hand, but they're, you're able to kind of, you know, um, engage others in helping to manage. How many would you say um, you have in total, like helping to do? I would say probably close to 25 mm -hmm. doing different things because we we don't close except to go to sleep so we're open seven days a week for adoptions for foster pickups and drop-offs and appointments um, so we have somebody at our locations every single day mm -hmm. so that means a foster might need to pick up food medicine supplies toys at any time of the day or night. Um, so yeah, we whether it be a volunteer or a foster, another foster or another volunteer or another staff person there to hand off things, they will know where those things are. So in each location, we have a designated area where we have bag foods bagged up mm -hmm. for the fosters. Here's kitten food, here's adult food, here's wet food. Here are the toys, so somebody doesn't have to go scrounging around looking for things. It's all in one location. Oh, that's great, awesome. Um, and then my other question is, um, you mentioned that you get back to people who email within two hours. How does how do you do it? Like how? I guess with volunteer support or that's well, that's amazing. actually the medical team. So okay. if somebody emails in to the it's medical at fur kids. Uh, they email in a question and sometimes I'll be honest, we, that's our goal. But if we're in the middle of a surgery day, it may be a little bit longer, uh, but that's for non-emergencies. So somebody needs to pick up medications or food or something. Um, the goal is to get back to them. If it is an emergency, then they call and then we can get immediate response. But our medical team is responsible for that email. Mm 